Come see me headline the Huntington Beach Rec Room Saturday, May 20th. Get tickets at jeremiahwatkins.com. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stem cells are the reason why the Tin Man doesn't squeak. It's how Dorothy got home. And it's how you're going to get back to the true American that you always have been. I'm Jason Statham. Who are you, man? My name's Jason Statham. Let me get this straight, right? Yeah. You're telling me there are two Jason Stathams in this world. There's two Jason Stathams in this world. Well, that's... I mean, that's impossible. How, how do we get to this point, Jeremy? Are you Agent Smith? No, are you freaking Agent Smith? Uh, I don't think so. Who the hell sent you, mister? Who sent you? I just, I saw a rabbit on that guy. Jeez. That sounds very nice. Uh, Italian NPR. Very nice. Yes, Italian NPR. Let's see. Si, welcome back to the program. Welcome back to program. Programma. Pro, programmi. Pro, programmi. Yeah. Sponsored by Mitbolo. In Michelette. Eh, Michelette. Mm, delicioso. Mm, the razors for hombres. Hombres. Also from a Spanish speaker. We're <laughs> yes, Italian, a Spanish. Also, it's, it's a it's mix. Like a, it's like a fusion. It's a, it's a, it's a romance languageoso. Yes. There's also Portuguese in there. Oh. Mm. Ah, eh. ah eh. Eh, este uh, vive en Brasil. A Brasil, ah, sí. Ah, sí. Ah, sí. En Brasil, sí. Sí, sí. A, a, a home of Blanca from a Street Fighter. Oh, Blanca from Street Fighter. My favorite character. Ah, Zeppi, Zeppi, Electrioso. Ah, yes. Zeppi, Zeppi, Electrioso. <laughs> The Portuguese pitch for Blanca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the pitch uh, room for like. Yeah, uh, listen. Uh, listen. He's zappy zappy. Uh, zappy zappy. Uh, Green. Uh, how you say uh, uh, electrioso? Electrioso. Um, more, more shocking. More shocking. 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 A, a big hairy, hairy. He, he. It's a guy trying to describe to a police officer who committed a crime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, como se dice uh, uh, Blanca? Blanca. Blanca. Uh, no um, white, no white. No, 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 no. Is it verde? Uh, verde, green, verde. Green, green. The salsa, the salsa. Like Hulk, the, but... But furry. Furry. <laughs> furry. Furry Hulk. Furry Hulk. <laughs> I don't know why mine went a little Japanese. Oh, yeah, yeah. Furry Hulk. Furry Hulk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Kite on the program today. Great to be here, Jeremiah. Uh, it's great to have you. A uh, man of many, 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 many faces many, and many, faces. many, many voices. Too, not enough faces. Why would I choose to wear this one? Come on. Come on, rim shot. Come on. Doodum. Doodum. E Blanca. E Blanca. Um, Was that one of your favorite games growing up? Street of Fighter? all time. I remember when uh, people would stand around the 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 arcade game like they were watching an actual fight. Oh yeah. And people would put their quarter up. And so you had to have Forrest Whitaker eye where you had to keep, you kept one eye on the game, but one eye on your quarter. Right. Because I remember there was a little people, I don't mean dwarves. I mean, people yeah. like there were kids that were there that would just snatch the quarters. Those sticky bandits, man. And I, and it was, it was intense. Like there was, I mean, there must've been 40, 50 people at that console just watching that fight. All lined up. Were you a street fighter guy? Yeah. I love street fighter. Yeah. Uh, my brother and I would get in fights over street fighter. Real fights. Fist fights. Wow. Over street fighter. Did you ever try to do a move in real life? I think we all did. Yeah, dude. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> I think we all tried to... Hurry, 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 hurry. Not as powerful in real life. No, there's no... There's nothing... Just the... the it's just, pretty much just this part of you, like... Yeah. There's just life force and chi yeah. coming <laughs> out of your... <laughs> or, that, or, or the guile. Some of them, like M. Bison, where he could, like... He did the torpedo. Yeah. I couldn't do that. So, you know the guy who played M. Bison um, in the actual Street Fighter movie? Do you know that actor? Raul Julia? Yeah. Do you Love. know that story about him taking that last character? I'm going to, I feel like uh, we're on a game show and I'd like to make a, a guess. Make a guess. I'll bet he had never heard of Street Fighter before in his life. And I bet that he didn't know anything about the video game or the plot of the story. Uh, I think that. Th this might have some, I mean, that might be part of the the story. The, okay. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure like how, what, how much he knew. All yeah. I know is that he knew that his kids liked that video game, but he was, he was, uh, you know, 
a great actor, had an amazing career. Incredible actor. And people were like, why did you take that movie? Yeah. He was like, that was when he was starting to die and he was hiding an illness at the time. And he took that role because his kids liked that video game. You know, similar story with Lord of the Rings. Um, Viggo Mortensen, who played Aragon, he wasn't the, come on. I mean. I So I freaking mean good. It, incredible. The original actor was Stuart Townsend, but he didn't look old enough. Oh. Rumor had it they wanted Daniel Day-Lewis, and he didn't want to do it. So they took Stuart Townsend, a very attractive man in his own right. But what a not, different movie that would have been with Daniel Day Lewis as Aragorn. Well, I got something even crazier to go after this. So, the, the, some of the original casting choices were just bananas, and so, Ar so Stuart Townsend didn't look old enough. And they said they kept adding gray to his beard because the thing about um, a Strider is that he was a he's like not Wolverine, but he was much older than his appearance gave. Yeah, and so they um, they called Viggo Mortensen or Peter Jackson did and they go, uh, we want you to play Aragon. And he's like, I, I don't know anything about this. And he was with his kid and they were like, they're like, they want me to do that movie, the Lord of the Rings movie that you, or the books that you like. Yeah. He goes, what character do they want you to play? And he goes, Strider. And he goes, he's pretty cool. You should do it. Oh. And so that's why he said yes. Selling point just from his kid being like, he's pretty cool. Yeah, but that's, yeah. I mean, what an amazing gift that we all were the, benefactors of oh dude of course he's so good in that in i all can't imagine movies. the movie without him i know and ian mckellen not the first choice for gandalf sean connery Ooh, i don't know <laughs> I'm not. he's just hitting orcs and women i mean i just you know because and i i think of ian mckellen for me is the cornerstone of the film Oh, yeah. And I can't imagine the sort of, because there's always a little, there's always a little bit of cheekiness in Sean Connery. Right. Whereas, whereas Gandalf is sort of like the wisest. He's seen, I mean, he comes back as a different guy who's the same essence. Of course. I mean, there's such an immortality about him where there's something very sort of, you know, a, a wizard is never late. I'm Gandalf the White. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Gandalf the Scotchman. Yes. I'm Gandalf the Kilt. I'm Gandalf the Hunt for Red October. Listen, he, he would have to have the short hair. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I'm not wearing a wig. Yes. I did it as Bond and I'll We're never not do it again. That. But he. <laughs> it's not manly. It's not, right, it's not manly <laughs> enough. And I just imagine. Get this wig off for me. I'm not using a cane. I can walk fine. I don't want people to think I'm old. Have you seen the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? So hold on. Yeah. So he did. <laughs> so he turned down. Morpheus in O oh, Schindler's mm -hmm. List. No, in Matrix. <laughs> in isn't that unbelievable? They wanted originally Will Smith and Tom Cruise were originally they wanted for Neo. Oh my goodness. Dude, this is how I spend my free time. When you and I don't hang out, yeah, this yeah. is what I'm doing. Dude, is Googling I, people. I, mean, I love all these facts. And so just because they're so and obviously when we audition for stuff, there's so many circumstances that go into it. But so he had said about Lord of the Rings, he didn't understand it. And so he goes, I passed on it. But he goes, I didn't understand the Matrix. So I passed on it. So that when they gave him League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he, he didn't get it. But he goes, I'll do it. Which oh, was like, no. What? Oh, no. <laughs> it's superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a real big these I'm days, aren't they? Alan Quatermain. <laughs> Who's that? The, the, have you ever read the comic book, though? No. Incredible. I hear that the movie did a big disservice Piss to the comic book. poor. Yeah. The comic, the, the graphic novels by Alan Moore, they're amazing. Yeah. But they're very stuff that you wouldn't do. There, there's some pretty shady stuff in the comic book, like some pretty aggressive weirdness gotcha. that you just wouldn't put. Because the movie's not rated R. It's like rated PG thirteen or something, and so some of the the sort of the, the ill habits of the of the characters they're all they're all characters from literature who had a very different moral compass than mm -hmm. we did than we do now, you know. Of course, and different so, time periods it, and yep. right, yeah, and, and so nothing being recorded, which is how a lot of their behavior reflected that. Mm -hmm. And so, but now that they tried to make it just so that everybody's sort of like the the hero of their own story, and thus all of these like misfits get together right. and like a little rascals needs, you know, and basically a big watered down package piece of yeah, yeah, dude. It was, I mean, it was awful. And I, and the whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking like, man, you passed on those other two. Isn't that One, crazy? What, by the way, the Ian McKellen did six movies as Gandalf, six movies. Yeah. And then, and, uh, 
And uh, Lawrence Fishburne did. Oh, he didn't do the last one, but three movies is mat- in the Matrix. Oh yeah, and Morpheus is such an epic role too. Incredible. I kind of like the fact that he didn't oh, do yeah. the fourth Matrix. Oh, dude. I love. I love that he's like, no. And by the way, he's still working. He was in John Wick is amazing. Oh, he's so good in John Wick. I love him. Like the fact that he was in John Wick and not that, I was like, dude, <laughs> you've just, you've moved on and you knew that that script was not as good as the other ones. I've literally pictured him just going, no, we're good. No, thank you. What else? Because you when I saw, uh, what is it? Matrix, what is it called? Matrix Revisited or something? The, the new one? <laughs> yeah, what's it yeah, called? Not rebooted, but yes. Uh, it's something like Matrix Reloaded. No. Revelations is the third one? That's what I thought. That's why I'm like tripping up on this new one. Uh, See, that's how, that's how not good the movie is. We can't even remember the title. No. It should have been Matrix Re and then the word we can't say anymore. Hey. The R word. But it was like, no. <laughs> Listen, mean, we've got a pitch. Listen, eh, you know how we used to be able to say it. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people have been craving to say that word. Yo. People are going to remember this title. <laughs> They're definitely going to remember. They're not going to be on a podcast being like, yo, what's the name of that movie? <laughs> They're going to know. They know exactly what that is. <laughs> but you were saying, sorry, I interrupted. But you're. Oh, I just, when I saw Morpheus in the newest Matrix movie, I was like, this is just, I can see why Lawrence Fishburne passed. It just wasn't, it just didn't do it for me. The gravitas. Yeah, the, the, there's no, there's no weight to it. Like when you see him in that first one, obviously giving the pill opportunity incredible scene yeah but also when he's sitting there and they're like get up and he has to like break through the chains and then he like flies out the window you're just like man that's what's so funny that like Lord, that um sean connery was like no nah, not this ain't it yeah okay i have an idea i have an idea for an impression scene between yeah. you and i um recasting the matrix okay will forte is morpheus okay and seth rogan is the one okay 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 here we go <clears throat> hey what's going on over there uh, i uh, 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 i uh, i uh what's happening to me right now this is uh, uh this is the strongest uh, strain of weed i have ever uh, uh, i've ever smoked in my life listen uh i've got a red pill and i've got a blue pill I got a lot of pills, mister. You got to choose one, though. Um, can I... Which one is easier to smoke? Listen, you're not smoking either of these, mister. These are down the hatch, and that's the choice you're making. I mean, it's a Tuesday. I don't know if edibles are the right thing for me right now, but, uh, I, uh, I guess I'll, uh... I'll take the blue pill because it looks more like uh, like NyQuil. <laughs> and I always like a good NyQuil. <laughs> and listen, Neo, I know you like popping pills. You can't take both, all right? Well, you got to choose one. What if I save one for later? Nope. The red one goes to me. The, you're taking the red one? I'm, I might take the red one. I we're, might freaking take it right now. We're about to go in two different directions. I know. Are you a narc? No. Are you a narc? Are you a freaking narc? No. What the hell? All right, give me the blue pill. You got it, mister. Here you go. <laughs> better, better movie. <laughs> Two guys that are so high that they think the other one is a narc. Yeah, yeah, are yeah. you Agent Smith? No, are you freaking Agent Smith? Uh, I don't think so. Who the hell sent you, mister? Who sent you? I just I saw a rabbit on that guy. Dude, I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Seth Rogen, a lot of parallels. They're both Canadian. Yeah. Both kind of aloof yeah you're never <laughs> quite sure what's going on yeah uh he had something like 47 words uh Keanu Reeves in the new John Wick yeah dude like really I mean, yeah he had like he had no no dialogue wow I mean I mean one of his major scenes in the original John Wick is yeah I'm thinking I'm back like that's like one of his big monologues dude that that was like the catchphrase of the movie <laughs> yep that I mean, I actually didn't. I never saw the John Wick movies until this fourth one was coming out. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a franchise fan, but I just for whatever reason I haven't seen the fourth one yet. I need to see the fourth one. It's it's as good of an action movie as I've ever seen because I think they pay off so many ways that we've never. They had all the money in the world and they had all the ability to do things, and they knew that they had to raise the stakes. Yep, and so which is 
so hard to do so hard. after three of those movies where it's adrenaline the entire time and moving and no dead spots. A hundred percent. It's like a video game, though. I think that the way there's so much thought and money that are put into video Did games. Did you see uh, The Raid or The Raid Redemption? No, but I, dude, I know. Okay. You've heard of them, though. Yes, yes. If you like the John Wick movies, yeah. it's kind of what the formula is based off of for the John Wick movies. Incredible. It is so intense and the fight scenes are so fast and so good. Is it it's, from Korea? Uh, it's in Asia. I don't know if it's from Korea. I, can't, I, I wish I knew what part of Asia. <laughs> yeah. Asia is a, a pretty big Asian, place. There's a lot of Asian there's people in this. Because big... what, what, what I'll say is um, there's an Indonesian guy in it that his martial arts is so insane. Yeah. Like, he's so fast. He's been in some of the, um, he's been in some fight scene in some other movies with Jason Statham and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's incredible how they are able to make because I love martial art movies. Yeah, they're able to make them. They're able to to make martial arts um, still interesting and captivating. Like, um, did you ever see the movie Old Boy? Yes, the original one, the one from from Korea. Yeah, yeah. There's just a martial arts scene with a hammer mm -hmm. where he's just going down the hallway. Oh, dude. I mean. It's um, they're still like we've. It's like we still want to see fighting, and they they still make it. They still send, tend to evolve the fighting. Yeah, it's incredible. It's you wouldn't think that it's like one of the oldest like you know like fight scenes in movies. Like it goes all the way back to like westerns where it's literally just drawing a gun and shooting. But the intricacy of like movies like John Wick and The Raid. What they're able to do with all of the different camera angles. Like I've got a buddy who is a stunt guy and he will literally help direct directors on how to shoot it to make it look faster. Oh, wow. They, that's like literally what he does. He's like, no, no, no. If you shoot it like this, it's going to make the hits look faster and it's going to make it look cleaner in the edit. Like, so he helps basically AD on just the fight scenes. So that's the thing I would say about John Wick. There, it, they in the fourth one, there are so many different styles of fighting, and, and I don't mean like I mean he's doing some sort of martial art, but where they take place and the things that are happening around them, because really that's what it is. Like what's getting in their way mm -hmm. is the newest thing. Well, that's my favorite thing. Like with watching any Jackie Chan movies, dude, dude, the his ladder work and random like using the props and the environment around him fire escapes different things in the city to me that is like i mean that that's why he won an academy award like for just literally being him yeah did you ever see excuse me uh the the legend of drunken master no so there's a there's a martial arts style called drunken monkey where they literally i think it's a rice wine that they're that they're chugging okay but it makes you so limber and loose it's maybe the idea um and don't do this at home kids but you know when drunk drivers <laughs> when they get into an accident their body sort of goes limp yes. and then they'll go through a windshield but then they'll still survive but then the car who they hit dies immediately 100 percent. but yeah. their body just it, it, right it's like like water you so know? that's just what flowing. it is yeah so he's drinking and he does all this stuff with it and he's sort of rotating and his equilibrium is off but in control and then there's a scene well at the end so it's so flammable that he's using it and he's spitting fire while fighting oh. dude it's it's the coolest thing in the world did you ever see uh his old movie rumble in the bronx back in the day i the pinball machine when he's going under dude it changed so my life. The ending credits. Did you stick around to watch the ending Every credits? Every time. I think it's as entertaining as the it's film itself. so amazing. If you haven't seen this movie, Rumble in the Bronx, one of Jackie Chan's OG films. It was the first one, I think, that came out in America to introduce yeah. him to the Western He's audience. Like, it's like his crossover movie. Exactly. Essentially. Yeah. So it shows after he is doing the stunts that he had some kind of ankle injury or foot injury. And the Nike shoe that he's wearing, he takes off. It's a sock because his foot is broken and he's still doing stunts in the movie. Yeah. It's so cool. Well, they were saying because um, a lot of it in in, uh, in Asia, there is no SAG. There's no union for mm -hmm. them. And so they just have to keep going. And <sighs> and that's, I think, the world. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's better explained than that. But it's just like the, their hours are long and you have to just... Do because a lot of the martial art films they look there's a my favorite martial art film of all time is called um uh um the master of the flying guillotine have you ever seen this no it is a 
in it is about a guy, a blind man who has a um a hat essentially that is a guillotine. And he and so he can hear you and he can throw it on you with a lasso and it decapitates you. And there is a It's like an Asian daredevil de- kind of exactly, thing. Exactly. Yeah. Or like scorpion. Yes. And okay. so but there's a tournament that's being held and the character is a one arm boxer. Like the late like the Ryu character. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy who's like Dalsim, but he, I think he's from Mongolia where he can extend his limbs. Okay. And it is it is so much of what I think of is the, the <laughs> sound effect of Kung Fu. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's all the jumping and all the crazy shit. Yeah. All the stuff that you love about video games, it's that movie. That's a... <laughs> and then the dubbing is <laughs> insane because you don't... <laughs> he'll be here any minute. Dude, it's, it's so worth watching. It's one of the coolest movies I've ever seen. I wish more movies were badly dubbed because I watched a German show on Netflix and it was very dialed in. It was so distracting. It was like so close that it, you're like, what is going on with the dubbing? And then we realized that we were like, oh, this is this was shot in German and when my wife and I changed it to German the show the acting and everything was 10 times better of course yeah of course so we watched it subtitled is way better but like watching it like the English version I was like this is this is too much did you see that you ever hear that movie called the Guardians which was like Russia's version of the um of the Avengers no no so it's like the worst version it's like someone with dementia recalling the plot of the avengers and then transferring it to russian uh uh um patriots we are guardians of solar system dude there there is a guy who's trying to take all of the satellites in space yeah and control all of the uh, uh of the machines in the world and it's this guy who's sort of, and in in the Russians, up there, the dubbing is so bad. And one guy, like instead of a Hulk, he can turn into a bear, but only from like the waist up. So he still has his arms and his legs. So man legs, like yeah, man bear. And then he becomes a full bear. You never go full bear, but he becomes like a full bear later in the thing. When I tell you there are so many plot holes, there are more mm-hmm. p- holes than plot. And I need to get to West Hollywood <laughs> immediately to become full bear. Full, I, I can't get it. It's the source of my power. <laughs> please feed me to the glory oh, hole. Please sprinkle me with glitter immediately. Please. Where is the twink? The twink. <laughs> I need twinky. Come here. And more twink, more power. Where is otter? Please feed. Of oh, otter. <laughs> <laughs> the Twinkie Twink, the Twinks yeah. Twink is the yeah. other. And so it's like it's, it, one guy can move rocks. The other guy has, qu- he's quick and has blades and then the girl's invisible. And it, the dubbing is, and they're all very, they're all, very, they're all like uh, uh, characters uh, from uh, Russian literature looking. They're all like very big and we're going to do this. Yeah. And so all the American, the dubbing over it is like, you can't leave us behind because we need to go together. And it's right. like, it is, it sounds off, it looks off, the special effects are off. It was not a good use of my time and energy. Yeah. But I was like, I have to see this movie because I'd heard so many things about it. You saw it through. It's fair enough. It took me three different sittings. Ooh, that's a rough movie. If it's, if it's a, a marathon through the, the different the settings, like you're like, am I really going to finish this? I'm going to try to finish this today. Nope, not it's too it's too hard. Okay, tomorrow. I go to bed and then I'd be like how much can I get through? And then I'd, so I So wh- why did you feel the need to finish it? Just as a movie fan? I as a movie fan and I wanted to see if it in any way got better mm-hmm. because the idea the trailer it looks unbelievable but of yeah. course you can cut together everything you know. It's like it's a team yeah. that comes together. I love the Avengers movies. Yeah. And when when I see not that Russia is good or bad for making movies. I'm sure they have both, but it's like, I would love to have seen like an Asian interpretation or a Bollywood interpretation of the Avengers. Right. Great filmmaking. Sure. But this was just like everything done in a Commodore 64. It's like, it's, they're all bulletproof. And at the same time, there's only like 10 soldiers. It's like a very low budget community theater production of the Avengers through the eyes of Russian, uh, Patri- uh, Did Patriots. you ever used to make uh, short films or and stuff like that back in the day? Back to the Future Part Two, I've remade fifteen times. You've remade Back to the Future too. We did it on a terrible uh, cam. We had the hoverboard. 
We would have it. We had. Um, Were you Marty? I was. I think I was Doc, or maybe was I Marty? I don't remember. I was probably in sixth grade. Wow. It, yeah. When it, it. I mean, it, when it just came out. How long was out, your guys' version? Uh, short. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jeremiah, it was feature length. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a two parter, uh-huh. and those parts were each two minutes long. Okay, no, but, but I remember we got we would always we never got through the movie, but we would always do up to the cafe eighties mm-hmm. and the, and the hoverboard scene. Sure, that was the coolest thing that it, we always tried to, to invent the um the the jacket, the form fitting jacket, and the power laces. Yeah, and so we we did. I mean, we, I'm telling you, we did like 10, 15 versions of it. <laughs> did you ever do that? We, I mean, I did uh, like my own bond movies and stuff like that as short films and stuff like that yeah i love james bond yeah who do you think the new one's gonna be i don't know did have they put any feelers out they have they put a ton of feelers out that uh i think it could be that guy aaron taylor johnson who is a quicksilver in the avengers movie in oh, the second one in- interesting he's like he's also playing craven the hunter for in the spider-man universe yeah yeah he has his own movie I've been excited for Craven, even though I tried to watch. Um, I didn't get through. I was like on a plane. I watched Morbius. I watched part of that. <laughs> Bro. I watched part of it. It is so bad. But did you ever see the Venom movies? Uh, I, You know what? I actually really liked the first Venom movie. Okay. The second one, I was like, oh, this one's, this one's kind of rough. I mean... It's. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a waste of more talent in my life. You know why I like the first one is I think it knew what it was, or at least it thought it knew. Yeah. And then the second one, they're like, they're like, yeah, we're gonna do that again. But like, it didn't know what it really, what they hit with. Andy people. Circus directed it. Did he? Yes. Oh. Oh man. Not good. <laughs> Come on. Come on, guys. <laughs> As we were both doing Biden. Yeah. What? Yes, folks. Venom's not good, man. It's not good. In my day, it's just a different. My, this is not your grandpa's is it, Venom. You know, a different kind of black. I mean, it's just. It's, they were different back then. It's yeah. the black that takes over. The, 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 uh, the black that takes over your body, man. Venom is it's a symbio, It's a symbiote suit. It's a, it's a good one. It, 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 Cars is, is more the, uh, 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 the Donald Trump. Man. He's trying to take yeah. over. Did you did you see the the headlines in the news today? They're they're questioning if we should put age restrictions on on presidents, and I can't help but think that they're talking about me. Yeah, come on, man. I'm serious, man. Being that old, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> I'll just take the blue pill. I saw the <laughs> yeah yeah Seattle's. Yeah, you. that's just <laughs> yeah his blue pills. Yeah, just, yeah. I saw headlines today where I was like, wow, because uh, I'm not too political of a person. No, but, uh, but he announced his, his running again today. Right, he announced it today, yeah. and I and then literally headlines below that are, should we deeply consider an age limit? And I'm like, I think we should. Yeah. I think we definitely should. I think you can be too young and too old. Yes. You got to have a Goldilocks have, there. Okay, listen. You have to be 40. Is, it, is that right? It's 36, I think. Okay, 36 now. I think so. Um, if you have to be 36, why can't we cut it off at 75? You know, I... Like, like the end of your term, you're 75 years old. Totally. I think that part of it is that they are... <sighs> I think that part of it is that those people, you have to accrue a certain amount of money. To be able to do that, and it's like that's it's why, impossible to dude, get there by being the fact that Obama middle-aged. or JFK, like, dude, that is insane that they were able to get that far and being that young. Yeah, because you yeah. need so many people to do you favors, <clears throat> yep. and and you have to have been around long enough where or people like know who you are, have tons of money, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. And, and there's you need one of those things. Yeah, and so I mean, but I always, I also think that. Um, they they're saying that somebody born today already i think i maybe the number isn't 200 but that somebody born today or who's alive today is going to live far beyond anyone who's right. ever lived before right and so that the fact that they, we are starting to cap especially them, with stem cell research and everything like that like dude people could start living till 115 120 100 percent easily do you know anybody that's gotten stem cells 
just like in that Joe Rogan circle of people. So, so like, yeah, obviously. So Rogan has got it. Uh, my buddy uh, Jason Ellis reconstructed his knee with stem cells. I know Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. He like lit- he can skate again because of stem cells. Whoa. I, he, we literally just had him on uh, the podcast, and he was talking about how it changed everything in his knee through multiple stem cells uh, being injected. Like, I don't know how, whatever it is, hundreds or thousands of stem cells injected but over he didn't get this done on american soil no it's brazil yeah, I mean, yeah. brazilian so yeah yeah the shark dna is in there yeah uh, well that's the thing that um that i knew a guy who couldn't walk because his back was so effed up yeah and then they plugged him full of it and then it really <sighs> like now he can just go Isn't and that he said crazy? it was so painful but he goes obviously it was worth it because i can walk now oh yeah take that temporary pain dude but how insane is that that we don't allow i mean I bet there's a lot of horror stories that we're not aware of where this guy's got Probably, like three knees but now. Like, but when also if you are in those circle of people who it's a connection or a favor to like very high up people, they're not going to mess up on these people. Oh, I was thinking the athletes when you when they when they would go get their knees repaired in the NBA in Germany and stuff. I go, Dude, they're getting something that they can't getting get shot here. up for sure. Yeah. Can you imagine like like just what that could do to prolong like athletes careers and stuff oh yeah like lebron is technically you know he's on like the tail end of his career obviously he's been in the game a long time but 20 like years yeah dude if he i don't know like if he did like if the stem cell research got to a level where there's like oh yeah yeah we're gonna replace everything that aches on you well i wonder though if he if he hasn't had some of that done before he probably has at this point if he's still going at his age i mean he's got to have a stem cell guy years of being very 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 good at basketball that's how you know that you've made it as you have a stem cell plug yeah. i mean that's a pretty remarkable thing and to see so does jason say that he feels any sort of uh uncomfortability or is it like back to normal i think it's pretty close i mean i think it's still like just as like like an older guy who's skateboarding, I think that you're still going to feel the impact and stuff like that, but nothing to where it was. He said that like it, it was hard to like, he couldn't get on the board like hardly at all before, but because his knees were so destroyed from ramps and, and everything from over the years. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. The, the, the stuff that we're going to have available. So I think with the president, the fact that they're going to be able to do that, think about what they'll be able to do with the mind. I, I don't think they'll ever put a cap now. Okay, this is this is going to be ignorant for me, but stem cells, if you could define them exactly what they are, do you know how to really, like, I kind of vaguely know what they I are? I think I vaguely. But I don't really understand what exactly is the stem cells. I think that they are, because we don't, and, and, I, and I'm going to get lit up in the comment section, the thing about QAnon so no, no. The, um, and I've said this about black people for years. No, no, the idea that listen, I know a lot of black people. Okay, and continue. <laughs> um, listen, I, yeah, I know a lot of black people. My backgrounds are black. I know black. My backgrounds. Uh. Um, but no, I, I think that because we don't regenerate cells, like they say, after twenty seven, your body begins to die. Yeah, and so we just don't have regenerative. Uh, properties in our cells that's just there's an expiration date in their makeup yes and I think that the younger stuff something at that level I think what it does is it can repair uh, the sort of the tissue that's damaged that's there so my question is is the people who are pro-life are they very anti-stem cell I think that I don't even know, and I'm going to ignorantly double down uh-huh. and say I bet they are because I I, I would assume yes. right if we're getting the cells from young. I mean, I don't. I'm going to have to do some research. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> before I put my foot in my mouth even more. No, but you're right. I'm just I, I'm just I don't know. Like stem cells is just thrown around so much. Hundred percent. That I literally am like I don't fully grasp what constitutes a stem cell like everything that's involved in there and i've looked up the things that it does uh and i was curious about and you hear about it like when mel gibson was on rogan and he talked about his father's rotator cuff gotcha and so i had that he gave a pretty in-depth um description about sort of 
the what had happened and i know that it happened from my buddy's back but i only know about those two repairs i don't mm. even know any of the other benefits about them i feel like this is a, a, a like this section of the podcast is like an episode of joe rogan but we're like we're we're uh, we're treading cautiously on Bro, these. I was just you know what I mean? It's cautiously optimistic, it, is yes. what the bottom says, and <laughs> our hands are up at the same time. <laughs> Jeremiah, I, if I may, I, I, no, yeah, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I no, I'm not sure. I'm uh, now. This isn't backed up by any information and very little Google searches. Now I haven't talked to any scientists about this. I don't know uh, the definition of STEM. <laughs> Listen. I just found out what a cell is. Well, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Okay. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like the internet cancel gun is on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. your hands where we can see. Don't you? Don't you? Okay. 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 <laughs> I know what I am complying. We're, we're I'm complying. It's fine. That I don't know. I think it, you're right. It's thrown around as a miracle thing. I don't even know yes. the side effects. See, it's it's. I've heard it so much, just like on the outer circles of of our our comedic peers and stuff like yeah. that where I, that's all i really know yeah. about it but i don't you know why because i think it's something like that um you know i even think about because I, I did a whole thing i do a whole joke about birth control uh woke and i <laughs> and i had to uh, google it i didn't even know the side effects of birth control like there i mean i knew that there must have been some but yeah. when you read some of them because people only want to talk about the positives of something of course and so i was doing i do a bit about an iud Mm -hmm. And about just what it is and how that like that's because people can still have babies mm -hmm. even if they have an IUD. Yeah. And so my whole bit was somebody had told me that that had happened. And I was like, what? Because I think in most guys, I pull the audience. I, very rarely does a guy in the audience ever even know that. And they're like looking at their partner who might be on one. I'm like, we have to talk. Like, yeah, because people don't do it. They just hear something positive about it. And maybe, and maybe I'm IUD, Aren't IUDs more like 95 percent effective or something like that? Uh, see, I don't even know enough to say that. OK. And I researched it okay, heavily okay. for a bit. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm on one right now and I couldn't tell you. Uh, <laughs> and I, this part of the podcast is sponsored by IUDs. <laughs> but it's true. It's like it's just Get your enough. California IUDs. <laughs> by 2025 um you i use promo code use, jeremiah watkins uh, you have to use it before you travel or go through airports california i use yeah this. especially in texas they won't let you in with them uh -huh. they have a metal detector for you uh I, I, i've heard i don't know i've heard I there's metal in them don't we don't know 100 no, i don't no. know um but it's 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 remarkable because i do think that people there is so much doom and gloom and like we didn't have birth control forever and then the moment that it existed people were like oh great it works or it can control or whatever and then there's always like it's like those drug commercials right mm -hmm. where they're like this might help you do this but also cause anal bleeding right and it's just like remember they had to just say that you were like huh? what why did your voice get so yeah loud? yeah yeah i think honestly uh with you know all the stuff that we're throwing around with just like we're exploring topics and stuff like that i think that is part of donald trump's appeal to a lot of people is that he's so yes. confident in just saying what he just thinks. So, like, if we're talking about stem cells and stuff like that, I know a lot. I <coughs> <laughs> listen. I know a lot about a lot about stem cells. He knows a lot about stem cells. I know a lot about him. Okay, he's a, he's the expert. One of the best. One of the truly one of the best. Uh, it's baby fluid that you put inside, like WD forty, inside of a can. You squeeze it right in between the joints. Like they split, you're good to go. You ever see The Wizard of Oz? It helped the Tin Man. It helped the Tin Man. It helped him so good. Stem cells are the reason why the Tin Man doesn't squeak. It's how Dorothy got home. And it's how you're going to get back to the true American that you always have been. Stem cells actually come from the Oompa Loompas in Wizard of Oz. Are those the same people as the Munchkins? I think they're just cousins. I think I think they're different. I think how there's Asia me and there's America me, and obviously there's China me. And over them, they're related. They're they're family. The way that I have family, they look like me, but not like me. It's true. They're different shades of orange, just like me, just like the Oompa Loompas, just like the Munchkins. We might all be related. We all have very, very vibrant, flowing hair. We're we're related to oranges, which is why I have the Sunshine State. I'm down in Florida, and the oranges there, I, I'm from oranges. They're Cabbage Patch Kids. This is true. Xavier Roberts, he signed them all. I was signed by the Sun Kiss. That's what my butt says. It's true, people. It's true, people. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's, well, that's what my, by the Shutting way. Shutting down now. <laughs>
<laughs> so his hall of president is going to be more lifelike than him oh yeah and i will tell you i do so the new trump stuff that i'm doing is about him in prison and and i do agree with like the, the what you just said about how he only says the attractive thing like he that's the loudest whatever the best thing the is ultimate about it, salesman yeah and he'll go yeah. do we you know i'm going to prison i'm the most indicted a lot of presidents have been indicted but i'm the most indicted. before me the presidents have never been as indicted as me that he'll spin it yeah and i think that that is you're absolutely right i think that that is his appeal to only say the good things about a birth control or a stem cell but not any of the side effects yeah to don't worry about those those aren't important did you, did you hear that when you get pregnant your boobs get very big it's a great thing but how do we make your boobs big without the baby i don't want a baby Trump, I just want the big boobs, to Trump, be honest. Trump IUD. I'm inside every woman. <laughs> gross. <laughs> so gross. Okay. Yeah, Arza, how did you learn your Trump? Like, what was, was there like a version of him? Um, I think that it was just an amalgamation of some of the speeches that he was doing. And then I think you pick up naturally random how when other people crack an impression mm -hmm. you pick up little nuances and stuff like that yeah but um one of the like i like it when i i am early on like early in on an impression that's what makes me feel the best when you crack it earlier than other people yes like when i started doing my will forte i had never seen anybody do it now people are starting to do it online a little bit here and there yes but when i first figured it out I was like, this is really good. First dude. And when pe when people have never heard it before, then they go, whoa. Like, it's right. such a magic trick for them. Yeah. That's how I did, That's how I come up with a lot of my impressions is I tried to do ones that I had never heard people do before. Yeah. And I when I was doing Trump, I tried to do him at the rallies. Because oh. I, only because there was such a specific, nobody else sounds like that at a rally because he was producing so much, not realizing that a microphone, like you would hear Obama. Oh, he was projecting yeah, so Obama loud. Obama would, I mean, he knew that he was in a larger room, but he understood a microphone because he had talked so much. Whereas Trump, he was out there and he was just shouting, not even realizing that we're going to win so big. And you're like, you're shouting and the microphone is right, is right there. there. Yeah. And so that was such a weird thing of him to, because he, he was so, they always said that you could tell when he was off the teleprompters, that that's when he would really flow. Of course. And so he was off, when he was off mic, literally off mic. Mm -hmm. And so he would just sort of walk around and he goes, is it telling me over there that we can't win? We can't win so big. And then it's just picking the whole thing up and you're like, dude, just the mic is doing all the work, buddy. I did, uh, I used to do this bit, this Jason Statham bit, but it was before he was mainstream enough. So the bit wasn't working because mm. he wasn't, enough of a household name dude that is so funny because i wonder i don't know that i've ever seen you do statham because i do statham when he did the uh the movie the meg when he was fighting sharks and that was in a weird way the what what i realized was putting people onto him because i used to do him at parties and shit and then you would never people just didn't know dude, what you were doing the part of the opening bit that i would when i when i was doing the statham i'm like you know the guy anytime you're like you know the guy from and you're like uh, nah, this isn't working you've you're lost already, you're lost yeah. him because you're trying to it's just like any joke when you're over explaining something it becomes less and less funny the more you're like you know you've seen him in this no uh, what about this and then people are like huh what do I, huh and then they're trying to recall the thing and instead then they're of listening to what you're it. doing yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. exactly yeah so i was doing before the meg came i mean this was this was way too early to be trying to do a state of the impression he just wasn't but i loved his voice so much that yeah. i was like oh i can do an impression of that guy yeah that's awesome yeah 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 because snatch was the first thing i ever saw him in mm -hmm. or maybe it was Lockstock. But I didn't know, like that was, I know like people look at it and like everyone's seen that movie because Brad Pitt was so good. I remember like back in the day, like not a lot of people had seen that movie. No, no, It no. became like a cult classic and yeah. Guy Ritchie obviously yeah. became a legend. But it's kind of like Grandma's Boy, like it tanked in the movie theaters, but on DVD had this huge, huge. swell where then it became part of everybody's like culture. Go to, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's so funny because I it's you're absolutely right. I try to learn people if I think I can do a voice like I did Seth Rogen very early on. Um, I actually did him for an audition when I was 27 years old. Oh, wow. And I'm 43 now. 
That's crazy. Yeah. Just and I, like I how heard, long you, certain impressions you've been doing. I yeah. heard him and I was like, I just, th- I genuinely was like, I think that guy's going to be a star. Like, I just, I don't know what it was about him. You know, there, you know, sometimes you can just tell like some people have certain, like a star quality or like just a, a quality that brings you in totally. as a viewer. I think that Adam Driver for a lot of women had that, like where they saw him, they're like, I don't know what it is about this guy, but I love, like my wife loves Adam Driver. I learned him from girls because girls had dropped the same year the two broke did, like 2011. Yeah. And I remember, and maybe because I'm, I'm a, a boy, like I watched the show and I was like, they are good, but that guy is something. Right. Like, I just remember seeing him and, I, and, I, and he had that very sort of like, it's very like specific, like he knows what he's going to say, but it doesn't always, there's like a, he's like always fighting through something, you know? Uh-huh. And I remember thinking like, what in a, he reminded me of John Malkovich or like something. Oh yeah. And I was just like, that guy's a star. His broken up speech patterns, very unique. Very. And you, and yeah. now he's obviously getting rewarded for it like tenfold, sure. but I mean. It, but it's funny because you like have you ever learned somebody who like didn't become super famous that you were like thought maybe they would be bigger? <sighs> yeah, I feel like uh, I'm trying to think of 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 some of the ones that I tried to get down. One that I got down quickly that I did what I was doing for a little bit. It was such a flash in the pan though. Was uh, the Tiger King, the Joe Exotic? Like yeah, like like I had people who when I was doing that I was doing some sketches and stuff with it there when Nicolas Cage got announced they're like you're not even gonna give Jeremiah Watkins a chance <laughs> like nice people on Twitter who would just, like that's said, awesome a few people would say hey those man sketches. you need the mob on your side <laughs> I know I'll take I know, it bro. I know, I'll take it that's cool though yeah yeah I mean it's it's one of those things where I felt like and then I, I had done a sketch show on Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they were just like asking, you just had to start learning people if they were in the news. And I gotcha. remember like I learned Freddie Roach, okay. who was Manny Pacquiao's trainer, you know? Oh. And um, and I didn't, I don't know anything about boxing, nothing about boxing, not as much, not whatever I know about stem cells, half of it is what I know about boxing. So nothing. And I had to learn this guy, and apparently he has brain damage, or he has like something, and I didn't even realize that. They were just showing me videos, and I'm learning it in the chair. I don't even remember what I did, but you just you just had to learn impressions for people of in the moment. I did, when you know you're on the right path sometimes with impressions and stuff like that, I um, I did this, uh, this sketch uh, around, did you see The Last Dance? Yes, you I'm know, from Chicago. Oh, okay. And I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a diehard Michael Jordan Bulls fan. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Love so, it. So, you know the guy who's betting him with quarters? The best. Okay. I came out with a sketch. Security guard. The security guard. I came out with a sketch, like, probably a month before, um, I think Nick Kroll did it on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And the few people that had seen my sketch, the few, you know, like thousand or whatever sure. that had seen it, yeah. like on YouTube and like on Instagram and stuff like that, they were legit so mad that, because it was like, a, it, it's one of those things where I just happened to be the first one to it. It was an easy premise, but I was parallel thinking. It was just parallel thinking, but people are like, you stole it. I'm like, no, no, no. This happened. This happens all the time. Where like, if the take isn't like crazy out there. Like I just did, I was just doing a parody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um, but it's stuff like that where you get excited, where you're like, you're like, oh, I literally, I saw that guy. I ordered a wig the same night. I was like, I'm shooting a sketch as that guy. He's so unique and he's got a cadence and like, you can't tell like what race he is oh, even. <laughs> like, he, is he a white guy? You don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. Cause when they did him, when they did him on SNL, it was played by a woman. Yeah. And so that's the thing. It's like, I think, but the cool thing for you, the credit is like that you're onto something because you got to think about the amount of sketches that we come up with Mm -hmm. that sort of like, I mean, the thing about the internet is you can put rough drafts or things that like may may have been pitched in a room and people like, dude, that's a really funny idea, but it probably won't make something. Right. But the fact that you were the first to it and been like, yo, that, and now obviously multiple iterations of sure. it, that's a cool feather in your cap to be like, you, you know, because yeah. there's plenty of pop culture things, by the way, that come out every day that don't make good sketches. Oh, of course. But, I mean, that's that's the whole thing with the internet is like, you're seeing rough drafts The everywhere. whole thing is a pitch the meeting. Whole thing, exactly, the internet is like one rough draft it's, pitch It's packet. a writer's room that doesn't need a second draft. 
<laughs> like people, or they will never get eyes on it again. Dude, yeah. Like it's so funny, but you're, it's, it's interesting when you're, yeah, when you're doing something that's that specific, it's so cool that that was, I mean, and, and because we were locked down, like I would have watched the last dance no matter what, oh, but yeah. the world was watching the last dance. That's what dance. was exciting about that. I, I literally, I told my wife when that was going on, I go, I know that like we, I'm not really a guy who is like super invested in uh, certain sporting things, but I'm like, this is like, this is a special one. I'm like, I'm going to buy this service or like it was on, it was ESPN, like whatever was their yeah, app yeah, yeah. before it went to Netflix or whatever. And by yeah. the time it went to Netflix, like everybody had seen it at that point. I'm like, I want to be able to talk to people about this. Oh yeah. I want to be able to connect over this. And I was so glad I did. It was like 40 or 50 bucks or whatever for yeah. like all the episodes. And I was like, this is so worth it. A hundred percent. And also we don't have the satisfaction of live events anymore that exactly. aren't sports related. So the fact that this was a drama that was unfolding and even though we knew the end of the story, we didn't know the story itself. Yeah. And to still captivate the world on something that was from the 90s, so it was good. crazy. It's so good. It was so good. And the idea that they got pretty much everybody to like, you know, and the fact that Michael doesn't do many interviews and he is a pretty private guy for I all the know. public opinions that everybody has about him. Yeah. Um, it's I grew up near the golf course that uh, denied him entry for being Jewish. No, black. Um, that does. Uh, what I tell you, I know bla that um, that it was it was the craziest thing. Like that when we had heard that, like he got denied entry from this golf, not like near us, but it was like in the vicinity. Right. And you're just like, I mean, it's you got to think about that guy what he came from yep. and sort of like even that environment when he was like Michael Jordan still wasn't the easiest path for him in the world. Have you seen the movie air yet? I haven't. If you like it, please sell me on it because You've I have heard mixed things. I, it, to me, Phil Knight is the one of the most fascinating people in the world. Yeah. I just thought that it should have been a mini series and the Michael Jordan story should have been one of the stories uh. because there's so much about that guy that that sort of that won't that it, it, you know it, it sort of got boiled down to this one shoe sure which i'm cool with. i'm yeah. surprised i'm not wearing jordans right now yeah, I, yeah, own, yeah. I wear them all the time um and we were it was like a dream thing for us because growing up we were so poor we couldn't afford them so it was always like a mark of like of success yes. and you made it yeah, yeah. like a, a rite of passage almost like if you get these jordans you're doing well in life a hundred percent yeah did you see it no, I, I want to see it though, just because I'm I'm a fan of obviously that era, and and my algorithm feeds me just highlights. I it it's, yeah. it knows that I will stay watching highlights, and randomly showed me a meme today of all the people that Rodman played with. Like it, it showed a collage, so Dirk Nowitzki, um, David Robinson, Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant. Um, it showed like Isaiah two or three Thomas. other. Yeah, it showed a, a couple other like just icons where you're like, he played with all these guys. He played on Dallas. Yeah, and he played on Dallas um, Spurs, Bulls, Lakers, and uh, and the uh, Pistons. And the Pistons. I mean, and the crazy thing about him, do you remember when he tried to get the he tried to get the jersey number sixty nine when he played for L A. Yeah. I remember that. I was like, dude. And I, I imagine someone was like, all right, wait a minute. Wait a second, Dennis. He wound up getting 73 because now they let them like Luca has 77. But apparently the rumor was that they wanted to be able to do that. Nothing goes above five because they want to be able to call out the jersey number. That's what it used to be in. And uh, it only went up to 55 back yeah. in the day. So they could the refs. So could they do could it. just do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. In high school, it was always like that for me. They're like, they're like, choose anywhere up to 55, but you can't can't choose past that what number were you i was always 12 always Ooh, what was the significance <sighs> double zero and 12 have always been my numbers for sports uh double zero because i was a goalie for soccer so oh. that was like a lot of times uh the goalie number yeah 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 and then 12 was has always been like a a lucky number for me i don't know why that's cool i think i was 30 maybe because i'm a december baby subconsciously it's possible it might be subconsciously it could have chosen that. I don't and know. it's a good number because I don't know many stars right. that have 12. Yeah. Yeah. So I always chose 12. And then like in basketball, like when they didn't have 12, like in high school, I, I, I was like 52 one year. Yeah. We, we, the, the guards. So I was, uh, 
I, I played one year and the taller guys had to have the bigger numbers. Always. And yeah. the, so like I couldn't have five. That point guard had five or yep. whatever, you know? And so it was just like, and our uniforms just looked like, we looked like the people that the heroes in the movie were losing to. <laughs> we just, they were like crappy, the, like the crappiest uniforms, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, uh, um, and I remember I had the, like, are these denim? What are dude, these? <laughs> <laughs> they were they were the opposite of FUBU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were just like, I mean, and it was just... <laughs> For them, by them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, nobody was touching. No cool people yeah, were yeah, touching yeah. these. But I remember I always had the Penny Hardaways. Because mm. like, I think that he's sort of the unsung hero about... Um, like, obviously, the Jordan 1s, I think the greatest, you know, uh, like, sports shoe ever made. Like, you could wear, like, the fact that you could wear also the Space Jams to prom, which people do, is so cool. Yeah. But Penny Hardaway... Yo, those shoes slapped so hard, and I had all of them. I just thought I thought he was the coolest guy who wasn't a bull. I was sure. like, that guy is just unbelievable. I mean, he's amazing. And I used to have the greatest shoes, and I'd be sitting on the bench. That sometimes happens. Sometimes yeah, the you know the guy who has all the newest like or the coolest stuff is like, yeah, it's I look not going to affect the playing, dude. I look like a Make a Wish kid who's like, can I just play on this team for like one day? You keep you keep going for your your breakaway the warm-ups. Dance. You're like, yeah, yeah. You're like, huh? now maybe I should just rip these off and just in case you guys need them. I don't want to waste any time. You're like, you keep those on, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't give you shorts. Stay you're not warm. wearing anything underneath. Stay that. warm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're naked. You are that. balls out, and not the kind of you stick with those balls, not ours. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, it was the craziest thing. I used to joke that they retired my seat. On the bench, right? With not my number ever, just my butt cheeks, and went to the rafters. Then no one's sitting in this part because I'd retired that part of the bench. Should we do um, uh, a Jason Statham uh, twin scene? <clears throat> Who are you? Hi, my name is uh, I'm Jason Statham. Who are you, man? My name's Jason Statham. Do you know me? Wait, me? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry. Are you? How do you spell Jason, though? J. A. Oh. S. O. N. Wait, wait. Let me get this straight, right? Yeah. You're telling me there are two Jason Stathams There's in this world. There's two Jason Stathams in this world. Well, that's... I mean, that's impossible. How, how do we get to this point, do you know what I mean? Are you what I call a doppelganger? I'm, I might be your doppelganger, but wait a minute. I mean, we'd be two different persons with two different names. I think we might actually be twins. Twins with the same name. Yeah, you could do that. From the same mum. Uh, who's your mum? Mrs. Statham. Wait a minute. That's my mum. Your mum? Who's your dad? Mr. Statham. Oh, mine is... Wait a minute, mine's Mr. Statham. Wait a second. Wait a tick. Hold on a second. Hold on right quick. What are your special skills? Punching people through the eye. Oh, I'm more of a kicking guy. Oh. See, twins, then maybe we're fraternal. Maybe we're not identical twins. Maybe not maternal. Maybe not. Maybe we're fraternal, but not maternal. Wait. We're born from the same semen, but not the same egg. I don't maybe know. from a different zygo. Maybe from a different universe. Wait, Wait Jason. Are you a different timeline, Jason Statham, than I am? I might be. Well, Jason Statham's in the multiverse. What's your favorite chocolate? Dark. Caramel. Your favorite chocolate is caramel. Yeah, it's a bit of a predicament, isn't it? It is. I think you're from a different timeline. You could be from a different multiverse than I am. I think I am. Yeah. How big's your dick? It's about... A yard. Hmm. We don't use yards where I'm from. Oh. We're definitely from different universes. Use meters. Oh, meters, yeah, right. Yeah. I've lived in America for so long. Yeah. I was going to say, it's a, the size of a baby Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, always funny, two guys. Two of the same. Yeah, yeah. Always funny. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it, it's crazy, though, that there's enough nuance and difference with what we're doing, but we're doing the same guy. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's it's like emphasizing different nuances about them. It's amazing to me because he's one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah, and it's he started. He he wasn't. I mean, I know he's an action star, but he started in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. He started in Snatch, mm -hmm. and think about where he is now. It's crazy. 
because he didn't have, I mean, he, he, he did possess those skill set, but it's not what he was being, that wasn't highlighted in those movies. Yeah. He used to have a toothpick in every movie. Dude. Did you remember that era of Salem? The. Yeah. It's a good toothpick. Yeah. Yeah. Sucking away. Yeah. I wonder if it was to keep him from smoking. I wonder if he was a big smoker. Maybe back in the day. Maybe he used to, underneath his shirt, when he takes it off on the oil fight scenes and stuff, there might have been a nicotine patch. His cover, that's where he used to have long sleeves and everything. Yeah. He sleeved up with nicotine patches. He was a heroin addict. Yeah. No. Nicotine. Not, not a lot of needle marks. Hey, you, can't, you cover them all up, eh? Yeah, the track marks. You know that uh, that Brad Pitt had to eat in every Oceans movie because he didn't want to smoke. So in, in those, oh, that's he why he's always eating? Constantly eating. Because there's literally like, uh, I've seen montages. Have you seen montages of him just eating in movies? Dude, and it's... It's, it's like a lot of a lot of food. A, a lot. lot of food. And he, he never... And I never some remember. people say, I've heard people say that it's also an acting choice of his. Really? Yeah. Because it gives him something to do. Uh huh. That way, you're not just standing there. It's you get a to to do something. Um, uh, you know our buddy uh, Dean Del Rey. Yeah, I love Dean Del Rey. So years ago, he he literally referred me for the first movie that I was the lead in. I was a suspense thriller in 2015. Cool. He referred me like the director was literally like, I'm looking for a, a comic who could pull off like serious, like for the suspense thriller. And I was literally hanging out with Dean and Dean's like, huh? Hey man, can I send you a picture to this director? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, sure. And then we ended up meeting and stuff like that. Dean and I got cast in a scene together in the movie and Dean, it's so funny. Uh, the scene ended up getting cut, but he has an orange and he's he's a detective who is kind of questioning me about where I was on the yeah. night of a murder where it happened. And he keeps working on this orange throughout the entire scene, but he never he never bites in the orange. So by the end of the scene, there's just skin of the orange that's just like falling off of like in the front yard of this character. And it was always so funny to me, like how he like kept working on the scene, like and he like like on the orange in the scene, he kept like using it as a prop and stuff like that. But it was good. It cut to a naked gun type scene where he's just up to his nipples <laughs> yeah, in orange yeah, rinds. Exactly. You know, exactly. Do you know that they're remaking Naked Gun with Liam Neeson? Really? Really, dude. Because of the, uh, it's going to be unreal. Oh my goodness. Because you know when he did that scene from Life's Too Short. Yeah. When do you do you remember that with no, Ricky no, no, Gervais? No, no, no. No. Where he when they go like he, he goes to Ricky Gervais. It's it's the it's the. TV show that was, or the show that was on HBO with Warwick Davis, who was famous for playing Willow. You yes, know? yes. So then they, they were, um, Liam Neeson met with Stephen Merchant and um, Ricky Gervais, and he goes, I want to do a comedy. And then they're like, oh, do improvisation. He goes, and then they, they have him play a green grocer, and he, he goes, I have AIDS. And he's like the worst type of improv, and it's just that he, this, this he's completely very, stoic guy. He's very good at being the, like a straight, yeah. Yeah. And so he, I think he's going to, they're going to remake it. Alora Dannon. <laughs> Dude, I just rewatched it. It's one of my favorite films of all it's time. It's so good. I love it. We go that way. The brownies. Yeah. Dude. Everybody. I mean, there are so many great people in that movie. Oh, it's crazy. I heard the TV show got canceled, though. Oh, I watched the whole first season. How was it? I saw like one episode. Uh, it was good, but I will say they were trying to lean in a little bit too hard on CW vibes. Does mm. that make sense? Of course it does. You know and, yeah, exactly of course what I'm talking I about. Do. So yeah. the ending credits would always have a pop punk uh, or like some kind of pop rock uh, variation of like for the credits. I'm like, no, keep it like mythical and majestic. And like, you don't have to lean into it's like, well, we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And like every, that, you know, and then it's like, da, da, everything's da, a cliffhanger. Da, yeah. Da, 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 da. Then it's like flashy credits. It's like, <laughs> it's Fraggle Rock suddenly. <laughs> yeah. But you're, yeah, when you, it's like they take the same stuff, but they go, we'll, we'll update the tone. And you go, I think the reason people are watching is because the tone is it's so perfect. good. Yeah, yeah it's unique. That first it's one. weird. It is the fact that it could exist in the time. Like, Nobody thought of that, at least in my generation. Nobody thought, like, this is a bad Lord of the Rings. Nobody no, thought that. because it was the 80s, and the 80s was fun filmmaking where you were allowed to be as weird as you wanted to. And people weren't questioning it. They're like, okay, great. And by the way, it still holds up. Dude, I love it. I, I love it. I literally just rewatched it, like, maybe a month or two ago. Um, We're going to get to our final segment. I got to have you back on because, like, I feel like 
I usually do like a lot of like like bits and segments and stuff, but I've been having so much fun just talking to you, like dude, just I'm, about movies. I had a and stuff blast, like that. dude. Yeah. Um. So this last segment that we're gonna do is called Sax Talk, and you're gonna share a story of a sexual encounter. It can be as as uh, as low key or as to the max as you want to make it. And okay. uh, I play some saxophone uh, while you while you play while you basically tell a monologue, a steamy monologue, and I sax it up for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. So think of a story. I got it. Okay. Uh, so I don't know when it's too early or too late to get a blowjob, but the first time I was in a Jewish youth group and we were having a lock-in at a temple and everybody is around and this girl and I start to like vibe each other and we go off to the side, but there's no really a place to hide in a temple, especially if you're going to, you know, get or perform oral sex for the first time in your life. And just as things are getting really hot and heavy between the two of us, we realize that there's a movie playing that's sort of distracting everybody. And we, and we look over at the movie and it's the opening scene to the movie Kids by Larry Clark. And if you haven't seen the movie, it's this young boy who's just pile driving this 11 year old. And the woman who ran the event just thought it was a, it, she thought the movie Kids was just a kid movie. So this little woman, like the size of a hobbit, is like sprinting down the aisle of this temple to like shut off this machine. So it sort of interrupted you know, we were off to the side hoping everyone was distracted, not realizing that they were watching this movie. And so about a month later, this girl and I hung out again. And there was sort of this unspoken energy that it was going to be on. And we went over to this guy's house and I had to dr drive with my friends like like two, three hours to get down there. But I just knew like if I got down there, it was definitely going to be on with me and this girl. So we go down to this guy's house and we go, oh, where are your parents? He goes, oh, the whole family's out for the night and everybody starts hanging out a little bit and we just start going through the house and finding reasons to keep leaving to go to see if there's like a safe space. We don't know this house. It's like the movie Clue where you're just trying to like find the murderer except instead of the murderer, we're trying to find a safe space to make out and hook up. <laughs> So we find this room, we go inside, it's completely pitch black, but the, the door isn't locking. And we could hear people sort of running around trying to find us in the house. So we start to take our clothes off and she starts giving me a blowjob. And the door won't lock and so we're like trying to stay in hidden in the shadows and just as we finish up and everything is good and we're sort of putting ourselves back together everything making out all that fun stuff between the two of us they turn on the lights and we're now fully clothed and we are we realize that we are in my friend's kid brother's bedroom <laughs> And no, he wasn't there. remembering the story yeah dude it was yeah it was insane because it started they were playing kids the movie kids the larry clark movie in this temple and this woman had no idea 
because it was like the K was a red and the I was right. a green. And this woman is just sprinting. And I remember thinking like, and we didn't see the movie really because we were like hoping that everyone was distracted. So we're like, oh, we'll be off in the corner just like hanging out. And then, um, and nobody, and then all of a sudden we like hear the pounding. And then um, we're like, we like sort of stop, like we're like, we're not even getting anywhere. We're just sort of like figuring it out. And then we're just like, what the f is that? And we like move over there and we could all just see on this big screen, this like 11 year old getting pile drived. And that was, I mean, I, I think I, it was, it was one of the most. It was so funny just to see this woman realizing what was happening. Oh yeah. And then the build up a month later to then go now for, try to find another place in this guy's house. Dude, it was. That's madness. It was madness, dude. Well, Jonathan Kite, I love you, dude. I love you, dude. Thanks for coming on the show. Where can people find you? Where can people listen to you? Uh, I got a podcast that I'm going to have you on. Yes. Kite Club Podcast. Um, Kite Club, my name, Kite Club Podcast. And then um, I'm at Jonathan Kite for everything. And then for my website is JonathanKiteComedy.com. Awesome. You were on tour. I just saw you in Austin. Dude, it was so fun. Dude, it was fantastic. It was a great time. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, I got to have you back because, uh, like I said, we, we, we just, I had so much fun just talking movies with you and pop culture and stuff. I so, know. Like, it was so great. Dude. Yeah, dude. It flew by. So we'll do it again. Yeah. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah. Thank you.